Hi everyone, welcome to Eat Something with D. This is my second episode. I'm so very excited to do this again this week. First of all, I want to start off by just saying thank you to everybody that's been supporting me through this wonderful new adventure that I've started. I'm really, really excited by the response. I had about 5,000 views on the previous video, which is a huge deal for me. I've also had a lot of support from my friends in the industry and my family, of course, uh, and my friends outside of the industry. So thank you again so much. Today, I'm gonna to be cooking up something that I feel kind of really proud of because I haven't seen it done this way before. So I wanna say it's kind of a new invention, uh, patent pending. Um, so let's get started right away. The recipe I'm gonna make for you today is onion ring pakoras. Now you've all heard of pakoras before. They're a very standard Indian snack. You see them on menus everywhere. We do them as appetizers sometimes. And they're really just very, very delicious. Plus they're deep fried and they're crunchy, which are two of my favorite flavors really. So let's get started right away. I'm not gonna talk too much. We're gonna get into the cooking and then I'll tell you the story of how I came up, came up with this particular recipe. So I'm gonna turn my camera and let's get going. Here we go. Now bear with me, it's just me and my camera. And I try and angle this so that you guys can see everything I'm doing. Here we go. That's good, right? You guys can, don't tip over camera. Come on now. Get a little bit. <laughs> Bear with me now. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, we've got all our ingredients here. I've got a red onion that I sliced up. Um, you know, is it lengthwise? No, I suppose it would be horizontally. And then you just pop out the rings of the onions and then you get onion rings. Um, and then I've got a cup of gram flour, which is also called chickpea flour. It's available literally anywhere. And once again, I've mentioned this before, bulk barn is your best friend if you're in Canada. Um, I'm gonna go through my regular spices. I've got turmeric here. I've got cumin powder here and red chili powder and coriander powder here. And a little bit out of frame, we've got a teaspoon of salt. Oh, half a teaspoon of salt, sorry. And one tablespoon, whoop. <laughs> this is live, this is what happens on live casting. But okay, I'm gonna pick up my spills here. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is um, sort of dried, fenugreek and if you don't know what fenugreek is it's kind of like this vegetable a leafy vegetable kind of like spinach um, and when you dry it uh, you get them in boxes I didn't dry this myself um, uh, it, it has a really lovely aroma and kind of gives a really earthy flavor most people um, don't usually put this in their pakora recipe I do it's a little addition I like to do because I really like the taste of it um, if you find it too strong or too pungent you can leave it out um, but I like to put it in so since I've already spilled half of it all over um, I am going to start by moving my onions out of the way, centering this up here, and let's throw that in. Let's throw in my salt. And then for the spices, um, if you remember, last time I explained my measurement of a titch, which is a little more than quarter of a teaspoon, a little bit less than half of a teaspoon. So a titch of turmeric. And then I'm going to do one good heaping teaspoon of cumin powder. I'm gonna do, I wanna say about a half teaspoon or so of chili powder, but again, it just depends on how much spice you can really handle. Um, you, I mean, pakoras for the most part aren't the spiciest of Indian food, so I wouldn't load it up. Uh, and then you've got your coriander powder, again, about a good heaping teaspoon of that. Uh, throw that all in. And then I just, I, t I like to take a whisk. You can do this with uh, a fork or a spoon or whatever, but I'm fancy, so <laughs> I like the whisk. And so I kind of just get the dry ingredients together. And then I have about a cup of water here, but we're not gonna use all of it. We're just gonna um, sort of stir as we go and get to a consistency which is really nice and thick. Um, because you want to coat your onions in this batter really, really well, and you don't want to sort of let it dissipate when you deep fry it. And you'll see what I mean when we deep fry it. So we basically will use about a, I feel like 
just a little more than a half a cup. And so I'm gonna put that in there and then just kinda, it looks really lumpy right now because chickpea flour in general is kinda like lumpy and weird. Um, and you know, I'm making a mess because that's what I do. And now of course it's looking super lumpy. So we're gonna put in a little more water and don't be tempted to like just dump all your water in there. I've done that a lot um, and it really kind of messes it up. And then you have to add more flour to even it out. And then you just keep going and you have like, you know, a giant batch of batter when really you're just using one red onion. So excuse the banging on my counter, but so you see how nice and thick and crazy this is getting? So you want it to get there. Uh, okay, that's a little bit much. We'll add a little more water. It's still not a whole cup of water, just so you know. It's still less than a cup of water. What is between half and a cup? Like three, four, three fourth, three fourth. That's a measurement, right? Yes. So maybe three fourth of a cup of water. We don't be afraid to make a mess. I'm a home chef. Nothing is perfect. I make a giant mess and then I take forever to clean it up and I whinge about it. Um, but you know, one of the casualties of cooking really is making a mess. So if you don't want to make a mess, you might not want to do this. <laughs> there, that is nice and perfect. I don't know what to call this. Is this dropping consistency? I feel, I feel like that's a technical term, but anyway, this is kind of what you want it to look like. Yeah. Mm. Nice stir, all the lumps are gone, all the spices are nicely mixed in there. And then you give that a nice shake and off it goes. And now you got your onions and basically all you're gonna do is dredge your onions in here and then throw them into boiling hot oil. <laughs> I generally use uh, canola oil or vegetable oil. Sunflower oil is really good as well. Um, but if you're looking again for a low fat recipe, this is not your way to go because ultimately it's deep fried. So here we go. I throw in, let's just start with one to show you how it goes. Um, I'll throw in one of my onions. Now usually I just get my hands in there because again, if you're going to cook, you're going to make a mess. But for the sake of um, <laughs> what can I say? Television beauty, and also for the sake of protecting my camera from getting batter all over it, I'm gonna use my little mini tongs over here, and we're just gonna really, oh, I lost it, oh, okay. See how nicely coated? Beautiful. So, once you have that in there, I'm gonna do another so I can throw them all in together. Just gonna coat them all nicely. Get that going. Perfect. And now I'm going to move you over to my hot oil that I have um, going. And let me show you. Hi, are you still with me? Hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show you my hot oil that I have going. And it's been going for a little bit. It's my little wok karai thing. Um, and now, essentially, if you want to check if your oil is hot enough, I'm just bringing my battered onions over here. If you want to check if your oil is hot enough, you just, here's what you do. You take a titch of the batter. Titch, remember what a titch is? Yeah, a titch of the batter and you drop, can you see, can you see? I mean, put a little drop of it in your oil, just like that. And if it bubbles right up and comes up, your oil is hot and good to go. So now our oil is hot and we're gonna put our onions into it. I'm gonna position this so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully not drop my entire camera into boiling hot oil. Here, is that better? Perfect, okay. So, essentially, all you're gonna do is pick out your batter-coated onion ring and slip it into the oil. Oh, look how pretty. Cooking makes me happy. <laughs> when things work out, it makes me happy. So you will hear me squeal with glee quite often. But here we go. Let's put another one in there. Oh, it's stuck to the side a little. That's fine. It'll be fine. And then, here we go. There's another one. Watch for the splashes. If you're working with deep fried, deep, 
deep frying in general, watch for the splashes. Um, I always cook on the far um, sort of back burner because I like to be quite far away from the oil. I don't want it splattering and again, hot oil will disfigure you. So now you can see my wonderful onion ring pakoras frying up quite nicely and I tend to turn them around once or twice just to get them nice and even and they will stick together they tend to like to do that they're all friends and they like they're like the annoying friends that don't that want to like walk around hand in hand everywhere so really you want to did you have those people like in high school they like held hands together all the time walked around it was really weird anyway um <laughs> you want to you want to make sure they're separate, they don't stick together, otherwise you have like a giant onion ring instead of your lovely separate onion ring. And now I'm going to talk to you for a little bit and tell you the story of how I came up uh, with these onion rings. I can't really take credit for it all here. Let me turn the camera back up so I can talk to you guys here. Okay, I can't really take credit entirely for this recipe, although I would like to. But essentially, uh, pakoras are one of my favorite things to eat and also to make for people when they come over. It's a nice little pre-snack, you know, before you get into like your rice and dal meal or whatever. Um, and so I had a special someone over and he loves pakoras. And so I made them one time and both of us were kind of enjoying them and he didn't really want to say anything. But onion pakoras, for some reason, like in the middle, they get really doughy. Because usually you'll just slice them up, you'll put them in the batter, you'll make a little ball out of them, and you chuck them in the, in the oil. And although the outside is crispy, the inside is kind of doughy and, bleh, and there's too much of like chickpea flour happening and, and it's no fun to eat. And so he suggested, well, why don't you do like individual slices of onions? And I didn't really understand what he was saying. And I was like, oh God, I have to do this for this guy now? And so I started slicing the onions vertically and picking out little slivers of it and dipping in batter and trying to fry it like I was doing like, I don't know, crispy fried onions or something. And he was like, no, like do them like onion rings like they do in the pubs. And I was like, oh my God, that, first of all, it was like a little bulb went off in my head because that is such a good idea. It eliminates all that middle goo that you don't like and it just leaves you with a nice crispy fried onion ring. So that made a lot of sense to me. Um, and I've, this has become one of my staple recipes now. I really, really enjoy making it. And I really like eating them. I'm gonna eat this whole batch once I'm done with it. Um, and so that's my little story of how I came up with this recipe. Um, something interesting about onion pakoras, and I, I feel like I'm playing it fast and loose with the word interesting, but when I came over to Canada, I noticed that onion pakoras were on a lot of menus. Um, and often it was called pakoras, but often it was called onion bhaji. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what bhaji means. And you know, in Hindi, the word bhaji means vegetable. So I'm thinking, are they making an entire vegetable dish out of onions? Like what is happening? Um, and so I'm going to check on my onions here because I feel like I'm talking too much here. They're, they're going pretty well. They're still going. And um, I'm just going to turn them over once. So yes, onion bhaji. Uh, I couldn't figure out what onion bhaji meant. And then at some point I realized that there was an H in that spelling. So I said, oh, they're saying onion bhaji. And it took me a while to figure out that they were actually saying onion bhajia. Bhajia is another word for pakora, so that makes sense. And that's my little teachable moment for today, pakoras or bhajias. But if you ever see onion bhaji on a menu, you know what they're talking about. That was a really roundabout story, but anyway, um, that's how it goes. So you can turn the heat up a little bit on these because by now what we're looking at is nice cooked onion rings. Um, we're just waiting to get a little bit of color on them. And I really like to get um, color on my on my fried things because if they ain't crispy, they ain't good, you know what I mean? So, yeah, got that going. Now they're nice and separate. Now they don't wanna to stick to each other because your batter is essentially nice and fried. And I'm just trying to get a little bit of color on there. Perfect. 
actually they look really good so i think we're ready to go that is the whole all now what i like to do is i line a dish with a paper towel so that it soaks up the excess oil because you really don't want all that oil in your in your mouth when you're eating it um and the good thing is like unlike traditional onion pakoras these don't soak up a ton of oil in the middle there so all you have is the lovely crispy ring of onion uh, and there we go that my friends are onion ring pakoras and that was a really simple recipe right it's kind of it's really all about just making what you like to eat, um, and making your friends happy. And this is one of the recipes that I did to make my friends happy. I'm going to put this down really quick, turn it back up so I can see you guys for one last time. That's really my recipe for you today. Onion ring pakoras, have them with a cup of chai, have them with, I don't know if you can have them with coffee. I like, do pakoras go with coffee? If anybody eats pakoras with coffee, let me know. But yes, have them with a cup of chai. You can serve these with, um, I love green chutney, which is a typical Indian uh, chutney, South Asian chutney, which is made of um, coriander, mint, chilies, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Maybe one day I'll make you chutney. Or you can do tamarind chutney, which is also very common. It's kind of a sweet and sour flavor. It's really tasty. Or honestly, I just do them with Frank's Red Hot because I am crazy and I love Frank's Red Hot. Um, I put that shit on everything. <laughs> All right, onion ring pakoras, grab a cup of chai, grab your best friend or your special someone and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me and for all the people that are talking to me right now. Hi, son of our so yay for everybody that tuned in yay for everybody that's gonna watch this later thank you so much and i will see you next week